יש לי דקנטים כבר לאומר, ברוך אתה יהוה אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר קידשני במצוותיו וציוונו על ספיר אתה אומר היום יום שבע. בלי שרו יהוה אלו הקינג אוף דה יוניברס, הוא זקומון דרס דקנטה אומר על דס די די סבן. Shalom, beloveds of the King. Praise Abba Yahuwah for the seventh day of the counting of the Omer and how amazing it is that on this seventh day the Father is going to bring us such a powerful message as we are continuing to be able to look at this book of Jeremiah, Yeremiyahu, that truly is speaking to us in this hour as if it was that we are living in it. And it's just amazing because even today, as I was speaking to my husband and he, as he's working through it as well, and he says, wow, this is just amazing because if people do not want to believe that they have any issues going on within them, they just need to listen to this, read this book, listen to what the Father is opening up in this book, and we will realize that we have much to repent of, and we will realize where we are going astray, and then we will realize why the Father is bringing his judgments to, upon us. And so let us start as we continue with chapter 9. Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears. And I would weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodge place for wayfaring men and I would leave my people and go from them, for they are all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. Now, imagine for Father to say something like that. Imagine for Father to say that this is his beloved house of Israel, and he's saying that they are all adulterers, and that they are an assembly of treacherous men. Oh, that I, <clears throat> and they bend their tongue like a bow, falsehood and not truth. Prevail on the earth, for they proceed from evil to evil, and they have not known me, declares Yahuwah. And so this is exactly what we see going on in this hour, where at the end of the day, what is going on? You see, are we those that on our tongue is falsehood? and not truth. What is being spoken and prophesied and spoken and taught from pulpits and taught constantly day and night within the churches that are going forth, is it falsehood? Is it truth? What is going on amongst people? I am horrified to understand how brother is turning against brother because of the evil tongue so we continue to read, and it says, So they have bent their tongue like a bow, falsehood and not truth, prevails on the earth, for they proceed from evil to evil, and they have not known me. So you see, when we truly know the Father, we have to understand that the Father brings the things to light. But when we do not know the Father, this is why we have so much destruction on the earth right now, because this is like what I say. How can there be um, three prophets speaking different messages? There's only one Ruach, and the Ruach can only speak the same message. He cannot speak contradictory messages because it's the spirit of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah is not going to speak a contradictory message. And so we have to be able to discern what's right from what's wrong. And so you see, the problem is it's because do the people truly know him? You see, because it says, they have not known me. And that word know is the word yada, which is the word to perceive, to recognize, to understand, to acknowledge, to discern, to become acquainted with him as a husband and a wife. Is that the way that we know him? Do we know him because we perceive, we understand, we acknowledge, we have discernment? We are being led by him. We perceive, we can recognize, we understand him as a husband and a wife. Why? Because we have the intimacy with him where he reveals his heart to us. But you see, why is it that many times he doesn't reveal the heart? 
Because we've got to go to what does it mean to truly know him? Because there's many going around saying, oh, but I know the father. Oh, you know, I know the father. I know what's going on in the father's heart. I know what the father is saying. But let's just go read 1 John. We go to 1 John chapter 2. And we read from verse 3. Because this was a revelation that the father gave me in 2008 when I was in a time of seeking his face. And when he told me, what does it mean to, to have eternal life? Eternal life is to know him, to perceive, recognize, understand, acknowledge him, to be able to understand, to be able to discern his heart, to become acquainted with him as with a husband and a wife. And then this is when I said, but Father, how do we, so he says, how do you know? So I said, I said to him, Father, how do I know that I know you? And he said to me, go to 1 John chapter 2 and go and read. And so when I got to 1 John chapter 2, I went and when I got to verse 3, listen to what it says. And by this we know that we know him if we guard his commands. The one who says, I know him and does not guard his commands is a liar. And the truth is not in him. So you see, they're not lovers of truth. And we're going to look at this tonight. Because you see, we're not willing to speak truth to people. We're not willing to speak the truth to the people because we don't want to offend people. So we will rather speak behind their backs because we don't want to speak it to their faces because we don't want to offend people. Well, you know what? Truth is what Father speaks. And if Father doesn't speak truth to us, we will not be able to be set free. He needs to tell me the truth of what I'm doing wrong in order for me to know that I'm doing wrong for me to be able to be set free. Now listen to what it says in verse 4. The one who says I know him and does not guard his commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. So if we're not guarding his commands, we are a liar. And when we say that we know him. But whoever guards his word, truly the love of Elua has been perfected in him by this we know that we are in him so you see whoever guards his word truly the love of Allah has been perfected in him by this we know that we are in him the one who says he stays in him or to himself also walk even as he walked which means when Yahushua was speaking to those um, Pharisees and Sadducees he called them brood of vipers why? Because he knew exactly what the seed was that they came from. But now we would, if we just speak something, people say, oh, don't judge. Don't judge. But Yahushua spoke what was exactly as it was. He didn't mince his words. He didn't mince his words one bit. He said to them straight, you are of your father, the devil. You are not of father Abraham. You are of your father, the devil. And you are trying to kill me because you see, you speak one thing to me, but I know what's going on within you because you actually have the heart of a serpent. And so now we continue to read in Jeremiah. And so we must understand that to be able to know him is to be able to have a relationship with him in intimacy, where he is able to reveal to us those evil things within our own hearts, not just that he's going to reveal everybody else's sin, but that he must reveal your sin to you. And so it says in verse 4, Let everyone beware of his neighbor and not trust any brother. Wow. For every brother catches by the heel and every neighbor walks with slanderers. So you see, this is what goes on in the body of the Messiah. You see, we will put on a face with the person, but then we've got no problem in having to slander them behind their back. Is this not what we do? This is what everybody does. And now brother is turning against brother because of the slanderous tongue. And everyone deceives his neighbor and no one speaks truth. You see, so this is where the slandering comes in. Because at the end of the day, I'm not willing to tell my brother the truth. No, I'll rather speak behind my brother's back, but I will not speak the truth to my brother because I don't want to offend my brother. Because now speaking the truth becomes don't judge. And this is where we're getting into trouble. But yet at the end of the day, Yahushua had no problem in speaking the truth, in having to address an issue. And he spoke it as it was. 
But you see, this is the problem because what does it do? For every brother catches by the heel and every neighbor walks with slanderers. And everyone deceives his neighbor and no one speaks the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak falsehood and have wearied themselves to crook. You know why? Because I just want to be a people pleaser. I want to please everybody. And so therefore, I don't want to tell the person the truth because I want their acceptance. And so when eventually someone speaks the truth, what do they get accused of? They get accused that they have no love, that they are harsh, and this is all that they get accused of. Because you see, we have taught ourselves to lie. But if you see a little two-year-old and a three-year-old, isn't it amazing that nature of those, you know, little children don't really understand when they're still small, they speak it as it is. And then we are the ones that say, oh, don't say that. But it's the truth. But then they speak it. But then you tell them, don't say that. So we get taught to lie. We get taught not to speak the truth. And we get taught to lie. And this is what is going on in the body of the Messiah at the moment. You live in the midst of deceit. So he says, you live in the midst of deceit. Through deceit, they have refused to know me, declares Yahuwah. So you see, it's because we are deceived. We continue to be able to be deceived because we're not willing to come into truth. And so at the end of the day, this is my motto. If I'm not going to be able to say it to your face, then I better not speak it behind your back. Because at the end of the day, that is going to be slandering. So if you've got a problem with a person, you go to the person and you sort it out with the person. You don't need to be able to speak it behind their back. Because at the end of the day, it's time that we start to become truthful with one another. So if you don't want to be able to, if, you, if you're not going to be able to be saying that to the person themselves, then don't go and discuss it behind their back. Be truthful. Have truth upon your lips. Don't be deceitful. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah of hosts, see, I shall refine them and shall try them for what shall I do because of the daughter of my people. So you see, we are going to be tested. The Father is testing us in this time to be able to see what is within our hearts. And so we are being tested and that's why I say, the more we are able to do this, sure, I tell you, these scriptures, they come and they tear you to pieces for you to understand if you just take those few words over there above that's enough to get anybody to want to run because at the end of the day we are all guilty of speaking evil we are all guilty of being able to slander we are all guilty of doing this thing so look what he says their tongue is a slaying arrow it speaks deceit it speaks peaceably to his neighbor, but his mouth, with his mouth, but in his heart, he sets his ambush. Wow, isn't that exactly what people do? People to your face will be so sweet to you and speak nice words to you, but they've got no problem in having to stab you in the back, behind your back with other people. Now, why do we do that? And this is exactly what goes on in the body of Messiah, that the Father is looking at this and saying, do you see where you stumble? Do you see where you fall? Do you see where your problem is? And you know what? I had to look at this and say to myself, oh, my Father, I am guilty of this. We are all guilty of this. And this is why the Father is highlighting it to us now to say these things need to come to an end. Would I not punish them for this, declares Yahuwah? Would I not revenge myself on such a nation as this? I shall take up a weeping and wailing for the mountains and for the pastures of the wilderness, a lamentation, because they have been burnt up without any passing. With any passing over, nor has the voice of the cattle been heard. Both the birds of the heavens and the beasts have fled. They have gone. And so Father is bringing a very serious issue of here to us. And he's bringing this chapter to us, the seventh day. 
divine perfection to say, my children, I keep speaking about these things. It's now time that you start heeding to my voice. I shall make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a habitation for jackals, and the cities of Yehuda. I shall make a waste without an inhabitant. And this is exactly what the father did in the time of Yeremiahu. And are we not going there again? Who is the wise man that he understands this? And to whom has the mouth of Yahuwah spoken that he declares it? Why has the land perished? Has it been burnt up like a wilderness with none passing through? Look and see in our own nation. Look and see the fires in our own nation that's going on. Constantly it's being burnt up and the Father is allowing it. Why? Because this is a people that will worship him with their lips. But yet in their actions they are far from him. And so what we do to each other, we do to the Father. We come before him. We worship him. We give him all these wonderful praise and worship and we tell him how much we love him. But then when he commands us to be able to be obedient in his ways and in his will and in his commands and to be able to listen to his spoken word, we don't want to obey. And so are we no different to the Israelites? Are we no different? And this is exactly what is going on in the nation. And you know what is so interesting is that last year when um, there was a, a prayer request that everybody was to be able to come and pray for the nation I don't know if it was on the 17th of the 7th last year and everybody had to come together and pray and when I was praying father told me Jeremiah 9 he gave me Isaiah 9 Jeremiah 9 Ezekiel 9 and if you read through those three it is judgment and the father spoke to me very clearly last year when everybody was praying and he said, my child, these people are no different to the Israelites. All they do is they seek my face to ask me to remove the affliction upon them, to be able to heal them, to be able to heal their land. Yet they will not turn from their wicked ways. So they only seek me for my hand, but they do not seek me. For my face. They do not seek me to truly know me. They seek me for what I can do for them. To change their circumstances so that their life can be better. But they don't really want to know me and they don't really want to obey me and they don't really want to follow me. And so this was already Jeremiah 9 that the father had given me last year. And I look at what he says in verse 13. And Yahuwah says, because they have forsaken my Torah, which I set before them and have not obeyed my voice nor walked according to it. So you see, what are the two things that we do? We do not walk in his commands, in his Torah ways and we do not listen to his spoken voice when he, hear, when he speaks to us and we do not walk according to it. So you see, there's many people that want to bring the Torah all the time, but do we obey it? Do we walk it out? Do we truly walk what it says? Because this is the difference. So we are to walk out his written word and we are to walk out his spoken word. It doesn't just help you to be able to obey him in what he speaks to you, but they're not obey him in the word because there's a problem. But they have walked according to the stubbornness of their own heart and after the bowls which their fathers had taught them. So you see, what, uh, what have the people doing? Walking after the stubbornness of their own heart and after the bowls which their fathers had taught them. So you see, our religious systems that our fathers have taught us, our forefathers and our forefathers before then, we just continue in our religious systems and we just continue to walk after that which has been. You know what? Don't go and change anything. Let us continue to keep the Easter. Let us continue to eat, do our little Easter bunnies and our Easter bunny hunts and our hot cross buns and everything else that goes with it. Let us continue to do our Christmas. Let us continue to do all these unholy feasts. 
But the feasts of Yahuwah, we don't want to keep. The Sabbath of Yahuwah, we don't want to keep because we want our own feast days and we want to do what we want. And so therefore we will follow the customs and the traditions of man. And the father is saying, you need to come out of all of this. You need to come away from all these things and come listen to me. And now we want to follow the rabbis and we want to follow what the rabbis say and we want to follow their Talmudic ways and their Mishnah ways and their Zohar ways and all these extra added things that they add to the word which is not in the word, but it's okay for them to do that. And then in the church, on the other hand, we want to run after all these other nice teachings that tickle their ears. And this is the thing that the father reminded me this morning and he said, my child, remember what I said to you. And this was a revelation. At the end of the day, we must understand something. Father's judgments upon the people. Do you know that false prophets are the father's judgment upon a nation that only wants to follow words that tickle their ears? So when the father raises up the false prophets, it is the father's way of going to judge the people because they don't want to listen to him. They want to continue following after prophetic words and prophetic words and prophetic visions and prophetic things. And this is all they want to do. And then it's peace, peace, where there is no peace. And so now we get to verse 15, which is a hard word. And he says, therefore, thus says Yahuwah of hosts, the Allure of Israel. See, I'm making this people eat wormwood. Hmm. What is the wormwood? My goodness, that is a word we've heard before. That is a word that comes up. Did they really eat wormwood or is wormwood coming? This is a, see, I'm making this people eat Wormwood, and I shall make them drink poisoned water. So understand, they are going to drink the root of this poisoned water. The root of wormwood is bitter. It's the bitter root. It is when at the end of the day, Father is forsaking them to be able to bring the bitterness of what is going to go on in your life. And now where have we seen that? First, let's go read it. You see, why are the people going to eat wormwood? We first need to understand why the people are going to eat wormwood. And so if we go to Jeremiah chapter 23, so let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23. This is going to come in the days ahead. As we're going to get to the days ahead, we're going to read this. And listen to what it says in Jeremiah 23 verses 15. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah of hosts concerning the prophets, see, I'm making them eat wormwood and shall make them drink poisoned water for defilement has gone out into the land from the prophets of Jerusalem. so you see why are we going to eat wormwood because what have we done we have gone into a sick bed and we have entered into a sick bed with this church of Tyre, which is the church that's being read, led by a Jezebel spirit this Jezebel spirit that is being able to bring the people into this mixed seed that they are going to be into. And he says, let's, let's look at Revelation chapter 2, verses 20. It says, behold I, behold, I hold against you that you allow the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and lead my servants astray to commit whoring and to eat food offered to idols and I gave her time to repent of her whoring and she did not repent see I'm throwing her into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great affliction unless they repent of their works and I shall slay her children with death and all the assembly shall know that I am the one searching the kidneys and the hearts and I shall give to each one of you according to your works. And so what is this church? You see, this church is the one that says that he's talking about um, that she, co she calls herself a prophetess and she is the one that... Uh, um, that is going to be able to lead the people astray because they're going to be able to bring the false prophetic. It's all about the false prophetic. And you see, what did Jezebel have? Jezebel was the one with the bold, bold prophets. Those were the prophets that she sent out. And so in the teaching, we did the whole teaching of the church of Tartira in the book of Revelation. We've been, we worked through, through the whole of that. 
And that gives you a good understanding of this church of Thyatira. But if we now go to Revelation chapter 8, let's look at Wormwood that's coming. And this is where Wormwood is being featured. And it's in Revelation chapter 8 verses 10 and 11. And it says, And the third messenger sounded, and a great star fell from the heavens, burning like a torch, and it fell on the third of the rivers and on the fountains of the water. Of water, And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. And just today I had a friend of mine that sent me three articles about water being poisoned by this acid because of the mines and the waters being poisoned. And then we're listening to the reports that's coming that's telling us that there's snake venom that's going into the water. So everything about water being poisoned is all part of the Father's judgments that's coming upon the people because they don't want to repent and turn back to him. And so what I say is, is it going to be those that are obedient to the Father that are going to be spared of this? And so we read verse 16. And I shall scatter them among the nations whom neither they nor their fathers have known. And I shall send a sword after them until I have consumed them. So you see, there's the destruction of the wormwood. There's the, the sword. There's going to be war that's going to come. Those scorpions, when they're going to be released, they're going to be able to slay the people. So all these things are going to come. So we must understand, if we are going to allow ourselves to continue to listen to false prophetic words telling us peace and prosperity, peace and prosperity. Just when they say peace and prosperity, destruction is on our doorstep. Verse 17, thus says your of hosts, discern and call for the morning woman that they come and send for the wise woman that they come and let them hasten and take up a wailing for us and let our eyes run with tears and our eyelids gush with water. So at the end of the day, what is the Father saying to us? We must repent. We need to weep before the Father for what is going to come upon the nations of the world. Because he's bringing a great judgment now. For a voice of wailing is heard from Zion. How we are ravaged. We are greatly ashamed because we have forsaken the land because we have been thrown out of our dwellings so you see is that not what's going to come we're going to be in the cities and we're going to have to be fleeing for our lives out of the cities out of our dwelling places because of the destruction that is going to come but hear the word of Yahuwah O woman and let your ear receive the word of his mouth and teach your daughters wailing and each one her neighbors a lam a, each one her neighbor a lamentation. So you see the father wants a lamentation. For death has come through our widows, has entered our, pla our palaces, cutting off the children from the streets and the young men from the squares. So you see, great destruction. Great destruction is at hand. It's on our doorstep. Speak, thus declares Yahuwah. The corpses of men shall fall as dung on the face of the field like cutting after the reaper, with none to gather them. Thus says Yahuwah, let not the wise boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty boast in his might. Let not the rich boast in his riches. And is this not what we see from the church? This is not exactly what we see in this church of Laodicea. These people that will boast of their riches and boast of their their might and everything, they just boast the whole time. But this is what he says. But let him who boasts, boast of this, that he understands and knows me, that I am Yahuwah, doing loving commitment, right ruling and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, declares Yahuwah. So you see, he's a just yeah. He's going to do right ruling. And we must understand and we are to know him. And we are to know that he's a loving father who is going to judge his people because they do not want to repent and turn back to him. Do we just see 
everything in the Bible where they get away with whatever they do? No, I don't see people getting away with what they do. There was a judgment that was coming upon them unless they are willing to repent and turn from their wicked ways. See, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I shall punish all circumcised with the uncircumcised. So please do not for one minute think, oh, but the Jew Jewish people are the chosen people, and therefore the Jewish people, the Father is going to protect them. Yeah, he's told you straight. He's going to judge the circumcised and with the uncircumcised. So they're going to be judged together. You see, if you are not going to be obedient to the Father and set apart to the Father, then you must know that the judgment is going to come upon you. Mitzrayim and Yehuda and Edom and all the children of Ammon and Moab and all those trimmed on the edges who dwell in the wilderness for all the nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in heart. So you see, there we go. Father is looking for the one who is circumcised of heart, circumcised of flesh. So it doesn't help all these Jews that are circumcised of flesh, but not circumcised of heart. Because at the end of the day, he's wanting the circumcision of the heart. He wants the knee to bow so that we turn from our pride and our arrogance in what we are doing. And so may Abba bless you all as we continue to look to the Father, as we continue to repent, to turn from our wicked ways, as we continue to read these chapters and we see ourselves in these chapters. And exactly as these women need to wail, we need to weep before the Father for him to be able to reveal to us the wickedness within our own hearts so that we may turn and not receive the wormwood. Because understand, this is not just what has been happening to Israel. We must understand wormwood is written in the book of Revelation, which is for us. And there's a third of the population going to die because the water will be poisoned by the wormwood. And this wormwood is going to be a star. Is it the meteorite? Is it this meteorite that is supposed to hit the earth? Is it this Nibiru planet, whatever they're talking about? Is that what it is? Because... There's obviously something that is going to hit the earth and it's going to bring much devastation. So all we can do is cry out to Abba Yahuwah, walk with him, know him, know him. Listen to his voice, be led by him. Make a note of Jeremiah 9.13 because that is what we need to do, says Yahuwah. This is what Yahuwah says, because they have forsaken my Torah, which I set before them, and they have not obeyed my voice, nor walked according to it. This is why the destruction is coming. So let us pray to the Father and ask him, Father, teach us your ways that we may walk in it. Let us hear your voice that we may be obedient to it. May I bless you. Shalom, shalom.